Welcome to All Set for Sunday, a podcast for busy and distracted Catholics to be a little more prepared for Sunday Mass. My name is Scott Williams. My co-host is Jeff Trailer. Hey, bud. Hi, Scott. Father Peter Marshall is joining us today. Hi, Hello. Father. Thanks for having me. Hey, it's a joy to have you in the new podcast studio. Yes, the ever-evolving and growing and emer- emerging podcast studio. Yeah, this is going to be the new place where we record podcasts. Excellent. You should all see it slowly get nicer. But in the meantime, you can do that on YouTube. Yeah. Right now, there is a bunch of crap behind us. It might sound nicer, too. I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. It could be worse or it could be better. Let us us know in the comments. Yeah. Drop us a a show note. Yeah. (laughs) You put it in the show notes for us. Put it in the show notes. It'd be great. Father, what's new in your world? Uh, not not much. Getting ready for be pastoring. We got a uh, NCYC and is that coming up? You're supposed to say NC and then we say YC NC YC NC YC. Uh, and then Advent and Christmas. When this re- this when this airs, it'll actually be past tense. But right. But yes. yeah, it 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 went well. It was it was amazing. Great. It was the best. A beautiful experience. Can yes. you believe all those kids and their yeah. funny hats? Hmm. Oh. Just glory, just glory to God. Did you do anything at the NCYC? Are you emceeing? Or... I'm, I'm emceeing. I've got yep. uh, a mass I'm emceeing Thursday and the mass I'm emceeing on Friday and then uh, helping prepare for and uh, assist MC at uh, the closing mass on Saturday. So, Are you emceeing for himself? No, uh, I take the other priest, the concelebrating priest. That, ah. That's usually... Who you're did you say you're assisting the MCs? So you like well, third, Father Brockmeyer is third tier MC. Is, I'm second tier. Thank so, okay. you. Father Brockmeyer is the MC for the closing match. If you okay. were a, a rapper, you would be MC second tier. <laughs> yeah, you you should tell your servers that joke. They'll think it's very funny. Um, is are are we done? <laughs> I went to mass at St. Jude recently, and you guys had some. Uh, a bunch of servers and it's it awesome. great. Yeah, I love it. And love several it. of them had mullets. Yes, that's that's. Is that a thing with high school students? That's the thing with the kids these days. Okay. Yeah. Uh, why? I I know why, but I want you to talk about why you have so many servers. How does that? How you do that? Uh, one, we created the high school young man uh, serving program. We call them MCs, and uh, they they're Third tears. They're <laughs> they're a huge help. Uh, they direct and manage the younger servers and uh, they set up the altar and they turn pages in the missal for me. They're fantastic. Uh, and then we opened up serving to, hey, if you are coming to mass and you want to serve, uh, get vested and and help out. And you may have more to do or less to do, depending on how many there are, but you're welcome to uh, to be a server at any mass you're present at. And that's just really taken off. It's, it's really awesome. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think it's really awesome. I've heard of other priests who do have similar programs where it becomes an invitation, but also expectation. Like right. It, that if you're there, you serve. Right. And that may mean you process in and you process out. Right. And you don't do anything else in between. But that presence, like in, in the, that act of service, that's really awesome. Yes. And, you know, uh, people will say to me, oh, they just... They don't, the, the kids get bored sitting in the pew or whatever. And I'm like, well, if, if this is a way to keep them interested mm-hmm. in mass, then that doesn't bother me. Yeah. yeah. Right? Not to mention, the you know, what? just been blowing up your DMs asking you those questions a little bit. <laughs> the, I was going to say the other thing that comes from it is like, I mean, Scott just said it, but I've been hearing it from other people too, that like people see it yes and they recognize they're like man they got so many servers at saint jude and that is not something you hear at a lot of parishes no. and so i i think a real side benefit for the parish is that sense of hope in the future that hey look at all the young people that we have at this parish and they're involved and they're engaged and uh that's a hopeful thing for the whole parish i would say the other piece being and I don't know that it's directly happening there, but I would imagine it would spark the conversation. Like as families start to pull away from church or right. if they're looking, if there's something that comes up, 
their kids are that involved and they're doing that, maybe like I've always said, the kids can be a, kids can be yeah. a great motivator in getting parents to mass. Right. And so if them getting to be a part of that and they love that and they enjoy that experience is the reason for them to say, no, we, when are we going to mass? I well, want to know when we're the, going. The really funny thing to me is to hear from parents uh, that they now have to arrive at mass early. Uh, mm, because nobody knows what the, to do. The kid wants to serve. So <laughs> I did show up late to your church. Yeah. Sorry. That's all right. Dominic's too young to serve anyway. Yeah. yeah. One day. You don't want that noise. <laughs> Not right now. Mm. <laughs> he would do. He'd do great. Probably not. <laughs> a couple of years. A couple of years. He'd be into it. Oh, yeah. No doubt. Yep. All right. Um, speaking of being into it. I'm ready to get it. into the two minute drill? Yes. You know why I'm so into this? Why? why I'm so excited. It is my favorite solemnity of the year. Oh, yeah? Absolutely. Yes. It really is. Why? Because of the title. And it's fitting that we're coming off of on the, the wrong page. We're going to, uh, yeah, you should get to that. Goodness gracious. Uh, yeah, there it is. Um, <laughs> my favorite solemnity of the year, the 32nd Sunday in order. <laughs> I was like, this is going to be more than something. <laughs> um, no, but. Here we've been having all this discussion on stay tuned if you haven't been listening, but come dumb questions, you'll hear about it about space travel. And here we are, solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then I love the Catholic Church so deeply and so much because then they decided that title is not enough for this feast day. Let's come over the top and say, King of the universe, mm -hmm. the solemnity of our Lord Jesus Christ, King of the universe, in case. There was any misconception or confusion in there. Let's establish it right now. And I love it. Can't so, do more than that. Nope. So our first reading comes from Ezekiel chapter 34. Um, have have you guys, did you, have you Shep heard about the readings this weekend? <laughs> I knew you were going to like it. I wrote it down up here. I was very excited. Man. Uh, yeah, definitely a, a shepherd feel to the readings this weekend. So the first reading talks about, um, how the Lord speaks to Ezekiel saying that he, how he will look after his sheep. And so he talks about as a, what the role of a shepherd is. And then he says, he will seek out the lost. He'll bring back the strays. He'll in, uh, bind up the injured. He'll heal the sick. But then he says the sleek and strong, I will destroy shepherding them rightly. So heads up, if you're feeling sleek and strong, right. you might want to start limping or something, but, uh, but I think it also makes sense for, I mean, that is what you do with sheep too. So. Um, but either way, he is there to judge one sheep from another, uh, to separate us and prepare us. And then we get into the responsorial psalm and we are at full on banger, straight banger. Yes. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Uh, just what a wonderful people actually know what's going on this weekend during the responsorial psalm. Right. The singing will be louder. Everyone will be participating. Your 40 servers will right. be you know, sing, singing along back there, your, your uh, music ministers might have to, might get to not just chant, right. But actually do that, a, that'd be nice. A, yeah. it yeah. would be wonderful. So, and then the, the second reading uh, comes from first Corinthians. Um, not so, I mean, the, the shepherd narrative is still kind of hidden in here, but not necessarily as uh, clear, but it almost echo. Well, it does echo the first reading in the sense of um, that as, as God comes and, puts his reign upon us. And as Christ has been raised from the dead, he then will be separating us in the same way that in the first uh, reading, we see the separation of the sheep. So he talks about how he will destroy every authority and power. He will um, put his enemies under his feet and destroy. Uh, and the last enemy will be destroyed to its death. And then all of us will be subjected to the son himself um, in the same way that death came through man and Adam, that, we shall rise in Christ, uh, in Christ's second coming. And then our gospel reading gospel is Matthew chapter 25, 31 to 46. Um, Jesus said to his disciples, when the son of man comes in glory and all the angels with him, he will sit upon his glorious throne and all the nations will be assembled before him. And he will separate them one from another as a shepherd separates sheep from the goats. He will place the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on the right, come you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me drink, a stranger and you welcomed me, naked and you clothed me, ill and you cared for me, 
in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you or thirsty and give you drink? When did we see you as a stranger and welcomed you or naked and clothed you? When did you we see you ill or in prison and visit you? And the king will say to them all, amen, I say to you, whatever you did for the least of my brothers of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, depart from me, you accursed, into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. A stranger, and you gave me no welcome. Naked, and you gave me no clothing. Ill and in prison, and you did not care for me. Then they will answer and say, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked or ill or in prison, and not minister to your needs? He will answer them, Amen, I say to you. What you did not do for the least one of these, you did not do for me. And I, these will go off to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Woo. Woo. Yeah. That one. was exhausting. Yeah. That was a great one, though. Father, I feel like there are 30 homilies that's in these like, readings. At least. Which is yeah. like, that's great. But like, in some ways, probably not great. Right. on a weekend like this, like I'm, I'd love to hear like, where do you go with this? Cause this, this probably, if somebody went to masses, like all over the place, you know, if you went to 10 masses right. in a weekend, you'd probably hear 10 very different themed homilies out of this, uh, these readings, or you tell me if I'm totally wrong because you studied homiletics and you have a doctor. No, I think you're totally, <laughs> I think you're totally right. Dr. Father. Uh, I, th I think father doctor, father doctor. It, it's one of the challenges of preaching on, uh, this is how to like hone in on what, uh, the spirit is, is saying to the individual preacher. Um, I think there's always themes from the feast itself of, uh, what does it mean to have a King and, uh, and the authority of a shepherd, uh, I think that there's some great themes about um, caring for our king means caring for the least among us. Um, you know, uh, Americans are very patriotic. We have the national anthem at our sporting events and flags everywhere. Uh, to be patriotic for the kingdom of Christ, the King of the Universe, means that we are engaged in service, uh, particularly for the most vulnerable. Uh, this year, I've I've also been contemplating uh, what does it mean to be uh, to 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 be King of the Universe in a suffering world, right? Like with mm. war in the Ukraine and the Middle East, and uh, a lot of. Uh, uncertainty even here in our own country like what what does it mean that christ is king when the world is going to hell right what does it mean yeah the good good question <laughs> uh, scott why don't you take this one right. <laughs> no <laughs> i i i think it 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 really tests our faith to say uh can we still believe um, in in a king that refuses to uh, make everything right today? Uh, and can we have faith in a king who asks us to wait and to believe in his closeness to us uh, even when things are going wrong? Hmm. I, that's an I like the phrase you used a phrasing there of a king who can make everything right. And like, and I do think that's, it's a, a way, it's probably a place we get stuck with like political leaders too, but also it definitely in our faith, we get stuck in this idea of like, why would you do this to me? Right. Or why would you make this, this it way? It must, must not be real because how could God let this yeah, happen? Right. Yeah. But this, all of these readings focus on the end time, right? right? Like, but in the end, we're being told like things will be right. Yes. And they will, but it's how it's the things we do leading up to that that help. Right. Yeah. And just the the mind-blowing 
miracle that uh, God invites, requires us to do so much of the work of building out the kingdom. Like he has left it in our hands. And I think that that's something we don't always contemplate is, um, am I working to build up the kingdom? That's my responsibility. And am I taking that seriously? Yeah. Um, I'm probably not mm. taking it as seriously as I should, mm. if you're asking me. Right. Um, yeah. Uh, no, I mean, even just reading through these readings gives that sense of like, well, where do I fall in these sheep right. or mm-hmm. where am I in the, and when the Lord comes and did I feed the hungry and clothe the naked? And even as I was just reading that gospel reading, you're just like flashing through like, which, which side do I end up right. on? Um, which we should, that should be what's yeah. happening, right? That should be the question we're asking ourselves probably daily, not just when right. we hear this, man, I was so excited about this feast day. And then here I am. Brought it down a notch. <laughs> no, but it's good. I think there is that question though, like whether or not, I don't know. I, I think I can fall into that trap of, am I doing enough? Am I doing enough to, to, to live out this, this gospel message? When I think of a world where, you know, things are, there's wars, wars and, and justices and, uh, you know, but what can I do in those situations? And where, like, how do we know the difference between when we, when we are listening and doing what God is asking us to do versus, I mean, theoretically there's endless opportunities to do better. Right. Right. Or is that just the, the game that we should be playing is that we should always try to be getting better. Well, I think, I mean, this is one of the beautiful things to me about Catholicism is it's always a tension. And so on the one hand, we have our role to play, our responsibility. On the other hand, we have a king who is God. And so we do our peace and let God be God and do do his peace, right? Mm-hmm. And so um, I think the something like a regular examine to say, am I doing my peace is sufficient, right? As long as we don't just kind of let ourselves off the hook. Mm-hmm. But um, am I doing my piece? Okay, then uh, leave the rest up to God and uh, it'll be all right. Okay, that's good advice. Yeah. Um, what becomes the practical walkway here for families? Like you've got young kids at home. If you have high school age kids at home and you turn to all your servers right. on the altar, right? Like what is the message you want them walking away from here or parents to be sharing with the, with their kids? Yeah, I I think uh I think parents ought to be really explicit about this is our faith. Um so if we are involved in a service project, we are doing it not because it's nice, but because this is our faith to say that we care for the poor. Um and uh and I think like, you know, can you say a little prayer before? Can you say a little prayer after? Um, asking questions like, did you did you have a sense of God in the middle of doing this? Was God present here? Uh, was he present in the people we were serving or just in the spirit of communion amongst the volunteers or, you know, like a little bit of low key theological reflection, uh, I think, to help make those connections explicit. Yeah, I think, I mean, obviously our gospel reading talks about the corporal works of mercy. Right. And I always think that's an, it's a, it's a teaching of the church and in the world of our church and think lists and memorized prayers and, and recited things. It's one that gets lost right. a little bit, I think. And so it's a good, I, I was finding myself sitting there thinking like, that's a good reminder for families. It's a very, Base, uh, such a simple way to explain right. to kids, like, here's what we're asked to do because the reading says, when I'm hungry, yeah. feed me, when I'm, you know, like, right. and, and says the least of, of my brothers, right? Like, when do we see people who need this? And yeah. yeah. Anyway, I don't know that there's anything there I, other than I'm sitting there thinking of like, well, how are ways we can help create those reminders? And anyway, but, yeah. Yeah. Good. What do you think is the one thing that families could do today. I mean, you can think of your parish or think of a parish you'd been at previously to really push the needle forward 
that we could be living in a better place. Like of all the things that are happening in this world, of all the the areas that we could be doing more charity work, more X, Y, or Z, what's the one thing Mm. that if you could say like, everybody, let's just do this and then the world's going to be a better place? It's a great question. I I think at some level, uh, the reminder that it all comes from the sacraments, particularly the sacrament of the Eucharist, right? Like that um, our attendance at mass is not an add-on to our week, but is the foundation of our week. Mm. Um, And I, I encounter this a lot. Families are very busy with lots of good activities and sports and um, music and all kinds of stuff for their kids. But do we say, here's Sunday mass, and then everything else has to fit in around and, and to support that? Or do we say, here's all our activities. Can uh, Maybe we can plunk Sunday mass in here somewhere. Um, I think that reminder that everything comes from the Eucharist and comes back to the Eucharist. And then I think, I think sometimes we don't make explicit enough, like this is the command of Christ. And we do this because this is what God has asked us to do, not because we're trying to be good people Mm. or uh, not because um, it's a value, which is kind of, ambiguous language right but yeah because this is our identity as catholics we need it we need it the king of the universe said so right how, how are you gonna argue with <laughs> i that? mean there is something to be said there right like yeah anyway all right dumb questions i got dumb questions <laughs> all right father we've been i don't know have you been listening lately uh not the last week or two okay Can commercial I... space travel is a thing right Right. So people are seemingly people now can pay money to go into space right. as we advance. Inevitably, there'll be paid trips to the moon. Right. right. You can go to the moon. Can't wait. We recently were discussing how the Bishop of Orlando yes. is the Bishop over the yes. moon. Strange. Yes. Lunar Bishop. So right. if you, so say we, there was somebody who made a donation, you got to, Yes. Travel. We're all traveling to the moon. You you are given the offer because we're going on a Sunday and we need mass set. Right. Are you are you in? Absolutely. Yes. 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 All right. Yes. No hesitation. You'd be shocked how many no's we've gotten. Really? Yeah. I think there's I think we're well, at three no's, two yes, or yeah. one yes. This is the second. Yeah. Yes. Second yes. Wow. Yeah. I know. No, like I've been waiting my whole life for this. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Let's, for that i'm a big old nerd so like old school star trek and... but never has the king of the universe thing made more sad like i right. yeah. this and i was like it's perfect yes yeah injustice if we didn't do it yeah. yes yeah so we have three priests who have told us they would deny us the eucharist and two who are in so oh, that's yeah. great no i'd i'd push somebody out of line <laughs> <laughs> all right go to catholicconcepts.com slash noon yeah lunar travel and make a donation <laughs> We'll be, we'll be working towards it. All right, Jeff Bezos, let's do this. Yes. Or or Elon, either way. Either way. Yeah. Is Elon doing recreational stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, not yet, because oh. he's not content. Bezos and, oh, see, the nerd is coming out. Bezos and uh, uh, Richard Branson have ah. are doing like suborbital things. Yeah. And Elon's Which you can not pay and doing that. do now. Yes. Like Elon SpaceX though, he's going straight over. Right. Like right. let's go. The moon or bus. Send a Tesla to the to Mars. Right. Yeah, he's skipping the moon, I think. I think he's just going to Mars or whatever. I don't know. I think he'd make a stop at the moon if he could. He's designing uh the, the cyber truck would be there. <laughs> he's designing the landing capsule for Nats NASA right now. So oh yeah. that dude's really smart. He's crazy, but real smart. Yeah. Okay. Here's the second. Uh, I don't even know if there's a question here. It's just more of a discussion. Dumb statement. As we talk about uh, Jesus Christ, King of the universe. So when I was teaching theology on like when we would have random one-off days, I would have a debate day where I would debate with the class that the idea of Jesus as a superhero. So in the world of like Marvel coming along and all of these different superheroes and stuff, 
I I would engage in like a really deep argument that Jesus could defeat any superhero that like there's proof in the gospels or at least allusion to the fact that he would have the ability to right. do these things. What are your thoughts? <laughs> the, the hard thing is uh, we love our superheroes to have a flaw, right? Like a pretty, yeah, a that's why he wins. Flaw, right. <laughs> So, so in that, in that respect, Jesus is in a, a different category, Ooh, right? That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. I hadn't really, I had never thought about it. Yeah. I mean, well, he's king of the universe. He's king of the universe. Yeah, there's like, no kryptonite. There's, there's no. Uh, and presumably if other universes exist, he's king of those two. Yes. Like there's, if they exist, it's because right. his father created them. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. So if you were in Mr. Trailer's theology class. Yeah. 10 years ago. Yeah, what this is what I always say is like, what's the what's the the superhero or the superpower or the thing you think of that you're like, yeah, but could how could he handle this? Like, yeah, that that that, that doesn't occur to me. I know. Yeah, sorry, I'm boring on this one. Yeah, he also like always in the back pocket is that rise from the dead thing. Right. It's like, yeah, none of <laughs> right. none of your guys can do that. You can, can so, respawn instantly. Yeah. So. Or yeah, or by locate right. or yeah, like walk yeah. through walls. Yeah. 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 Uh yeah. Walk on water. Yeah. Presumably just like fly. Create yeah, like, food out of nothing. Yeah. You yeah. send it into heaven. Yes. Fly. Flight. Yes. Mm -hmm. Huh. Anyway. All right. Yeah. It was like I said, more dumb statement, but that's always I really enjoyed that day in class. It was always great. Just really and like the uh the, my like experience equivalent of that is talking about confession to people and mm -hmm. they're like well what about if this happens wouldn't you break the seal then wouldn't you break the seal then and the uh the fact that the answer is always the, no the, the answer never changes yeah yeah no and then they're like what you right. wouldn't <laughs> yeah yeah and they're like i would and you're like yeah that's why you're not a priest, <laughs> you're not a priest. <laughs> gotcha cross you off the vocation list um, all right yeah. Is that it? I don't have any other dumb questions off the top of my head. You got any dumb questions for us, Father? No, no. Good luck this week. I know it's a, a lot. And then... Uh, it went great, remember? Oh, sorry. Yes. yes. I, I'm glad to hear NCYC went great. Get yes. geared up for Black Friday. I know that's a busy time for Ooh, you. Woo. Yeah. So this... I think that already happened, too. Uh, no, 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 no. Black no, Friday it'll be right before, right before this. Uh, oh, okay. Good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Whew. Yeah, we're in the hustle and bustle around right here. <laughs> Yeah, really getting it done. So, yeah. All right. From the All future, right. signing off. <laughs> Thanks, Father. Thank you.